Blog Talk Radio. Hello and good morning. Welcome back for another episode of Taking Your Business to the Next Level. Our call-in number is 646-716-8438. And if you'd like to listen to us live, streaming live on the Internet, we're on Blog Talk Radio. If you want to send us, uh, give us your contact information, you can find us at nextlevelteam.net. Enter your email address and name there, and we'll put you on the mailing list. Again, our call-in number is 646-716-8438. My name's Tony Williamson, and I'm here with Bill Resize, and we're ready to crank it up. So strap in, grab a piece of paper and pencil. We're going to share a lot of great news for you, a lot of great information, as we help you take your FlexCom business to the next level. Good morning, FlexCom America, and good afternoon, FlexCom International. Hey, guys, I just want to welcome everybody to the morning Next Level Leadership Call. Uh, today's call is going to be a little bit shorter and uh, a little bit more direct and to the point today. We won't be uh, having anybody coming in and asking questions today. But, uh, you know, first I want to uh, tell everybody I, was, I really very much enjoyed seeing everybody at the event in Henderson. Uh, a lot of you that came out, you got to uh, meet a couple of folks that I've been you know, talking to now for 90 days about getting engaged with FlexCom. Uh, first thing I want to do is, you know, tell you that we've started the vetting process, and I want to uh, make an introduction to Mr. Nick Patterson this morning, let him come on and just talk to you about this process and what we're doing uh, to go forward with FlexCom. So with that being said, Mr. Nick Patterson, good morning. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, Bill. How are you doing? And good morning to everybody in uh, FlexCom. <clears throat> I want to First, start out by thanking everybody for uh, just <clears throat> treating me and my business associate, Mr. Link Blake, with uh, utmost respect and professionalism. Uh, guys have been around business for a while, and have been around network marketing for for some time now. And um, you truly have a special group of, of people here. And, and I've really got to meet the core leadership, 1920 uh, men and women, and extremely, extremely pressed, and that's the real reason. I know it's sometimes you might hear people say that, but that is the number one reason why <clears throat> me and my partner, uh, Link, have decided to take a look a little bit deeper into Flexcom. It's because of you guys. The technology really is secondary, um, but I want to thank you for, for just greeting us with, uh, you know, love and affection and, and, and support and gave us a lot of feedback, which helps us with our vetting process. <clears throat> and with that said, um, we have a couple things we're going to go over here today, and one thing I want to go uh, go over with you is that um, as we start looking at the vetting process, we think that there is one important goal and factor that me and Link have ourselves, and I think this is probably uh, the biggest rallying cry that we heard from you, the field, was <clears throat> refunds um, for existing DMRs or existing merchants. and. What we've asked FlexCom to do this morning on the call is we've asked them to calculate the number. I believe the number they came up with right now as far as DMRs was $127,000. If I kind of take what I've heard from the field back in some emails, text messages, and conversations, it seems to be more than that, but I don't know. We, we're going to wait for FlexCom to give us an accurate number. So what we did is we've set a follow-up call for them for next, uh, uh, I believe it's next Tuesday, or is it Wednesday, the 29th, at 7.30 a.m., the 29th. I don't know what day that is right now, guys. I'm not in front of my calendar, but we've asked for them to come back to us with uh, a refund amount and how they're going to refund that. We feel that that is so important before we start going to step two and step three of this vetting process because we have a lot of things that we're concerned about. We're concerned about possible, uh, you know, state attorney uh, attorney generals, uh, possibly the U.S. attorney general, and possibly the FBI um, actively looking at this company ready. We don't know. Uh, they could be on this line listening to us right now. But um, it's everybody's goal here to make sure that everybody is taken care of, particularly the DMRs and the merchants who invested in money and didn't get the product that they signed up for. They, didn't, they, they don't care 
nor did they sign up for any type of problems and issues. And for some of them, it's been over 12 months. So we feel that it is so important before we go to the next level as far as accounting and some other stuff that we address those issues. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to introduce my business associate, Link Blake. He's going to go over some uh, two, uh, two uh, you know, next steps, step two and step three, and then I'll jump back on here with Bill in a couple seconds. But I appreciate your time. Mr. Link Blake, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Nick, and good morning, everyone. And as Nick just uh, brightly stated, we, I would like to add my personal thanks uh, for each of you, meeting each of you uh, this past weekend. Uh, you were all very, very candid, uh, very, very open, and as Nick said, that is, in fact, very, very helpful. Uh, Nick mentioned the prerequisite for us moving forward is step one, obtaining refunds. Step number two, uh, and they, Flexcom, have agreed to this uh, after the refunds have been made to all of the DMRs. Step number two would be for a full and complete review of the international financials. Um, we may go ahead and extend that that and make it a forensic review uh, so that we can confirm independently that this company um, has the financial wherewithal to continue being a going concern. Step number three, equally important, is to do a full and complete review and confirmation of the technology and to try to develop a history for their engineering, their engineering processes, their working technology. Uh, both of those things have to be in place for us to move forward. Uh, in this morning's conversation with Volker and CEO Engelsberger, uh, we made all three of these points crystal clear. There will be a summary email I will write to them basically summarizing our conversation with them, these three points, and we've, requ we've requested uh, an explicit acknowledgement and agreement to that email, which they said they would do. So uh, the vetting process has begun. We are diligently crossing the T's, dotting the I's, uh, as Nick said, primarily for you all who have... Uh, extended such commitment to this program uh, through your friends, your family, your relationships. That is the driving force for us uh, to make sure those commitments you've made are, are honored in the best and highest way. And we express that explicitly to CEO uh, Engelsberger this morning on the phone. He understands uh, the three steps we've outlined and that step number one, being the refunds, must be fulfilled first before we go any further. Step number two, again, will be a full and complete review of the international financials. And at this point, we're even considering bringing in an independent uh, auditing firm to do a forensic review of their financials. And then again, step number three will be to review their engineering and confirm their technology, um, try to see if it is in fact working as they're stating. So uh, with that, we feel we've laid the groundwork for the, the level of mutual accountability that is necessary uh, to hold ourselves as well as Flexcom International accountable. Uh, it's only under those circumstances we will be moving forward. Uh, one other quick point before I pass it back to, uh, I believe, Nick. I would like to personally uh, and highlight Bill Resides. Uh, he has been a stalwart in this whole process. He has been professional. He has been open and honest with us. And in all cases, he has always expressed his desire to protect and to support the field, meaning everyone on this call who is a DMR. That's been his first and, and foremost concern. And Bill, we appreciate that because uh, 
it's the first step to servant leadership. So with that, I'll turn it back to, I believe, Nick. <clears throat> well, Link, ditto uh, for that. I, uh, I agree with you. And, you know, there's a lot of leaders there. Um, you know, and Bill's the, the main person while we're here, but it was because we started developing, uh, you know, relationships with Mike and Dr. Bird and, and Eric and, uh, you know, Larry Holcomb and Kerry and, and uh, Chris and Mike are and all different leaders out there. What, what we definitely loved hearing on the on the plane right back is it was just amazing. Um, I've seen companies not going in the right direction before, and usually it's about my money, what can I do, me, 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 me. And it was just amazing to hear at a bill all the way down to my DMR, my team, my family owns a store, you know, it was just amazing to hear about 98% of you guys with that same rallying cry. And I tell you guys, it was, it's inspirational to me and Link. And, you know, we're not getting paid for this. Um, we are doing this all because the relationships we see and that, like you, we're hoping that there's an opportunity there for us. But all the time and hours that we're spending into this is because of Bill, all the way down to every single person we spoke with. With that being said, Bill, I really appreciate that we've been speaking to each other for 10, 11 months now. We really got heavily engaged maybe the last three or four months. Um, I'm going to turn it back to you, and I can jump in on some of the points. But I, I really appreciate you, Eric, Mike, uh, and a bunch of your leaders. Like George, I can't remember everybody's name off the top of my head, but I truly appreciate the transparency and, even important, the servant leadership, the quality of worrying so much about your team making money and worry about the merchants making money and everybody spent money. So guys, it, it really was a blessing to me personally, just to hear uh, the consistent aligned uh, rallying cry from all of us. With that being said, Bill. Link and Nick, I appreciate and again, both of you guys and guys, these gentlemen are, are the utmost professionals. Uh, I know many of you got to meet with them and, and speak with them uh, in Henderson and uh, we all want to see the proper uh, leadership, the proper C-level leadership. Um, we all want to see that transparency from Flexcom America to Flexcom International. Um, we've all got questions that, that have went unanswered. Uh, we all have concerns about um, uh, the technology and certain things and timelines and milestones. Um, because, again, you know, uh, we, we've all bought into what we think is the best concept that we've ever seen in our lives. Uh, you know, I know in my business career, this is by far the best business concept that uh, that I've ever been involved in. And, um, you know, I've bought into this, you know, 100%. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any question uh, over the last year of, of um, my loyalty to the team and to tr continue to go forward. But, um, uh you know, at this point in juncture, guys, um, you know, because of the differences in, in international, because of compliance uh, and the things that, that have to happen here in the United States to be compliant, um, and because of, of, of not just us recognizing, you know, as we continue along this journey, but Flexcom America, uh, the corporate leadership that, that was at Flexcom America that, that were either there before or currently, uh, and and I'm, I want to commend Gene Mullen uh, for working uh, with the attorneys and going through compliance. I know it was rough, and we were on hold for 45 days, but I really want to commend Gene Mullen for everything that she's done to make sure that we were compliant. Uh, and as a result of that, you know, uh, there were letters that went out uh, certified that gave all of our DMRs three options, and, um, uh, you know, basically in that the due diligence process of compliance, they figured out that, that the terminals could not be sold to the DMRs and only to be sold to the merchants. Um, so if you received a certified letter as a KTM, you have an option. Well, you've heard these gentlemen, um, you know, what they're doing to start the vesting, uh, the vetting process, um, um, the, the talks and the demands that have already been placed on Flexcom International um, and then the seven days. So as a result of this morning's conversation, uh, I believe uh, we will have information back by Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Um, 
you know, there will be no blog talks until Friday the 31st. Uh, on Friday the 31st, we'll come back on and give everybody an update as to um, what's taking place. And I'll let, uh, you know, Nick, again, just highlight that timeline. Uh, first, I would like to say, in speaking to Volker, uh, currently the only uh, demands of refunds that have been laid out there, of course, the ones that have been sent back as the three options, um, of course, uh, there are some disgruntled uh, DMRs uh, that have done chargebacks uh, that are still in the process of being uh, going through discovery. But um, uh, he said there were no merchant requests for refunds. So I want to encourage everybody, if there is a request at the merchant level for a refund, please send me an email so I can get that on to Link and Nick uh, and to the appropriate folks so we know everything. Um, because we want to make sure that everything's transparent. And, and during this process, of course, we all want to go forward, and we all want to have, and, and I can and assure you that if these gentlemen uh, continue the steps and they go forward, you'll have leadership uh, at, at the sea level of the corporate America that you've never seen. And uh, the experience, I believe, in the, the, the systems and processes that they wish to implement are going to be huge. So, um you know, if you have any, any request or anything on the merchant level, please email me that. Um, uh, but I want to make myself very clear that uh, that I am personally on hold. I encourage everybody to be on hold in the recruiting efforts of any DMRs or any merchants during this process. Uh, so I do uh, encourage everybody to just pause and hold uh, and let us give you the updates as we all work on this together. Uh, so um, with that, uh, Nick, anything else that you'd like to add or uh, maybe go through that timeline one more time about uh, uh, the next seven days? Yeah, so the next seven days, uh, number one is we're going to uh, we're going to wait for Flexcom to respond on when they're going to pay the refunds back uh, for what was quoted to us $127,000. They're going to check and see if that's an accurate number and come back to us on the 29th at 7.30 a.m. They for full transparency, they didn't 100% agree to uh, to the 29th at 7.30 a.m. Uh, we're waiting for Paige and, and uh, uh, Mr. Rudy Engelsberger to talk with his wife about their scheduling, but it is a tentative 7.30. Uh, we told them within seven days. It could be later on that day. It could be earlier that day. Uh, we're willing to wake up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, to uh, find out what that final number is and when they're going to disperse those funds. Number two is uh, is the accounting uh, process that we're going we're gonna to go through, and it might be something that's done just on our level, but based on everything that we have seen up to this point, we are definitely taking under consideration about doing uh, bringing in a, a third indepa- uh, independent firm to do a forensic audit review. There's a lot of different locations, a lot of countries, a lot of corporations that are tied into the mix. And the reason why we're doing that, guys, is, any C- CEO, COO, CMO, any person who takes a C uh, uh, type of leadership role with a corporation in America is taking responsibility for that company. They're assuming any debt, any liability moving forward. Um, we could be brought into any type of court proceedings and be held accountable liability-wise. Um, I'm not looking to put my family through such, uh, nor is uh, my, my business associate, Link Blake, so this is just a common practice, and some of you that have been in the corporate, uh, corporate level, you understand you're nodding your head with us. So that's the purpose of the forensic audit. Uh, the third point, um, and that's not 100% the forensic audit. We are 50-50 on it right now, and we're going to start looking at options for that. Third point is the technology. Uh, Mr. Blake has a background with Bell Labs. For those of you who know, Bell AT&T, he is – Uh, has the tombstones needed to go through the technology and really try to figure out is the technology or can it do what they say it does. And it's really important to understand that uh, because everybody, whether it was from merchants or whether it was from DMRs, has signed up and paid X amount of dollars because of the technology being able to do such. So we want to make sure and review that process. And also at Link's background, he can also help and aid in that process and also reach out to the adequate teams that, if need be, to bring in-house. The fourth thing is is that we suggested with Bill when we were talking with him is that 
you don't move forward with any block top calls because there's no reason to talk or bring on merchants or any DMRs, and, and Bill agreed uh, while we go through this process. So moving forward, you know, we agree with Bill that he shouldn't personally sign up any merchants nor DMIs, D, uh, DMRs, and that's up to each and every person here on this call to decide with themselves of what they're doing. It is definitely our encouragement, and we encourage both Rudy um, and uh, and Volker this morning on the call that we weren't going to move forward until we went through the refund process. But dealing with what we call Area 1s, it's very challenging as it is. The least we can do is stop the bleeding right now and figure out what direction and just find out what is real, what is fact, and then move forward accordingly. The last thing that we, we've asked, uh, you know, Bill to do is to get, you know, find out the uh, Volker stated on the call this morning that not one merchant has requested a refund. Um, I personally find that hard to believe. I'm not questioning Volker, but due to this sensitivity of the Vegas office and people not able to answer phones and who knows emails, I know that the one or two people there were very overwhelmed and one of them was sick, and we totally understand that. But the merchants came in because of your relationships. So if you have merchants that basically said, I had enough and, and I want out, well, A, how much money did, it, did they invest into the terminal, and B, how much money was taken out of their account for the, uh, you know, for the deposit, the security deposit. We need to know that, and if they want their money back, well, now's the time for them. It doesn't matter what terminals it was, the K-1s or, you know, the new terminals. It doesn't matter what packages. We need to figure out what that is. We're going through the assessment. We actually reached out to about seven to nine different leaders as well, and we've asked them to put from the top 10 to 20 items that are most pressing needs for them right now to move forward. What are the needs, what are the things they need or issues that they need resolved or answers they need to questions for their merchants and for their team to move forward? And we've asked each and every one of them uh, to put them in a chronological order of, of importance for them. And then what me and Link are going to be able to do is put all those lists together and put them in a priority, uh, you know, prioritize that list of what's most important to the field. And then as we go through the vetting process, we can actually start addressing these issues, guys. It is me and Link's um, personal relationship with each other, guys. We met each other um, when my business personally was struggling and I was going through some some down, uh, you know, times as far as my organization. We were making a lot of money, but the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. This process, even though it might seem tedious and a micromanaged type approach, it is what a lot of Fortune 500 companies do use in their, their vetting process. Um, I appreciate Link who introduced this over, I believe it was 11 and a half, maybe 12 years ago to me and my businesses, and it's what I use personally, whether it's my real estate or it's my energy company, it's the vetting process that I use. What I can promise each and every one of you is sometimes we don't get the answers that we want, but at least we will know that all sides are held accountable and we got the proper answer or we got the proper reaction, which meant the result. And here's what we were looking for in full disclosure. We were looking for an A, B, C scenario, an A scenario being that Flexcom is going to address these issues and we move forward and they, they ask us to accept positions and we move forward together uh, with Flexcom America. Or a B issue was, the B scenario was that they were going to take care of the refunds and that we would work on bringing in J, uh, JV or venture capitalists, and we would, Flexcom America would stand on its own, we would license it, we would take care of the technology in-house, and we would move forward in a B role, but we still have to complete the vetting process regardless, and the refunds have to be taken care of before we move forward. Or it's a C role, and the C, the C option is that um, they don't want to have any transparency, nor do they want to take you know accountability or responsibility for the decisions that were made here in America, and they don't want to refund anybody. And if it's a C model, then me and Link will love to see you and, and you know join the the next part of our lives. But we would then opt out. So the vetting process has begun. Flexcom, to their credit, has acknowledged us and have you know welcomed the process right now. And we're going through this. We just want to be fully tr transparent with all you guys and keep you in the loop of what's going on. And I just wanted to make sure, because a lot of people kept on congratulating us, and I even seen some posts on Facebook, and even some people, you know, tagging me that I had to untag myself. We are not, we haven't signed on board for, for uh, Flexcom. We are not, the, he is not the CEO link, I'm not the CMO. We haven't accepted those positions, nor have they been offered to us. There's only thing that has been signed is a letter of interest, which was read 
uh, in in uh, Vegas to a leadership of about 20 people, and the letter of interest just says that they are interested in pursuing me and Link and engaging with us. Um, for full disclosure, once again, uh, the CEO, Rudy Engelsberger, asked me and Link some questions on our backgrounds. Uh, he asked us for some updated information that we will be emailing back to him um, as well as a summary. So this is the process that we stand at right now, guys. So you know me and Link aren't paid consultants. We are not have accepted any leadership nor money from Flexcom International or America. It is our due process and our due diligence and our vetting process that we like to do first before we take on any roles. We are not looking to take on any roles and then say, hey, fix all the problems. We don't have any no problem uh, with going ahead. And Rudy asked us this morning what were our ideas and suggestions, and we gave him a few on which ways we would go. We just want to make sure that you guys know that we are at arm's length right now from the outside looking in, and we're excited because of every single person on this call about moving the vetting process forward and coming out with an A, B, and C at the end of this tunnel. With that being said, I have no more, um, you know, I have no, no more to add to this other than please get your information to, to Bill as fast as you could while we go over this refund policy and we look into it because we don't want to adjust the refund policy right now and then somebody tells us two, three, four weeks ago that they have 10000 or 20000 in refunds and we already addressed it a certain group of numbers. So please put that together plus any ACH deposits. That's really going to help us. And those leaders that have either been contacted by Bill or me via text or email, please, if you could, within the next 24 hours, get us that top 20 list. We need it, guys. It's very, very important. With that being said, I'll turn it back to Bill or Link if they want to add anything else. I respect each and every one of you guys for the process uh, that you have allowed to take place up until this point and the patience that you've had. Um, and I really, really appreciate the respect that you're giving us for our, our vetting process, which I believe at the end is going to help every single one of you is make an ABC decision for yourselves. Hey, thanks, Nick. Thank you, Bill. Um, Link, anything else that you, you'd like to add? Uh, no, I, I believe Nick has, has covered it beautifully, and I can just repeat, uh, we respect all of the leaders we met. Um, you all impressed us. Um, you all showed and, and demonstrated a level of integrity and professionalism that uh, we feel is exemplary. So it's in that spirit we're trying to move forward uh, on our collective behalf. And Bill, again, once once again for you, uh, we understand the weight you are carrying. And so uh, whatever we can do through this process to edify and support you, and by extension your cast of leaders, uh, we will do it. Okay? So with that, okay. I very much appreciate it. And, guys, uh, again, you know, this process is necessary. Um, when Flexcom International asked me uh, to uh, to take a, a, a leading role, um, you know, a, as a title of country manager, uh, it's become very apparent, you know, not just um, um, since I've been in that role since uh, about mid-June, but it's been it's been very apparent that we've had so many ups and downs, starts and stops. Um, guys, we've got to do this process. You know, it, it's a, it's very apparent uh, that 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 this is time for a reset. And to do a reset properly, we need to clean the slate of anything outstanding, anything that that's negative. That's the only way we're going to do it. Um, and uh, the process has started. So um, again, I want to thank both. Um, uh, both these gentlemen for coming on the call. I want to thank these guys for uh, spending many, many hours with me on the phone over the last 90 days uh, on their own dime to come to D.C. Uh, at the D.C. event where they met Volker for the first time and then to come on um, uh, with the anticipation of meeting Rudolph uh, Engelsberger in Vegas. Um, but uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, the hours that you guys have put in, the time listening in on these calls, um, and all the vetting process that you've actually already done over the last uh, three months, uh, just to get you know get prepared for what we're going into right now. So, so thank you both, and uh, 
Uh, guys, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the blog talks on hold until uh, we'll have one on Friday one week. Uh, from this Friday, it will be the 31st uh, to give everybody an update. So um, until then, uh, we're signing off. And uh, give me, uh, again, emails uh, based on uh, anything that you'd like me to get in front of these gentlemen. I will pass that on. Uh, and I look forward to, uh, uh, to giving you guys an update next week. So with that, I appreciate each and every one of you. And, uh, guys, we're going to uh, end the call. So, uh, Link, Nick, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right, guys. Okay, that's a wrap. Another episode of FlexCom. Take-